So maybe you've been making pottery for a little while, or maybe you're a be total beginner and you're struggling with getting cracks right here on your handle. I have a couple tricks that may help. I'd love to show it to you. Maybe it'll help you out. You may have come here from Instagram where I've recently had like a viral reel about this issue. Um, I do think everyone needs to be taught this because I have found it to work 99% of the time. So here are a couple of mugs that I make. I actually tend to make very simple handles. I like really sleek, simple designs that just feel really good in your hand. Though I like very clean, simple designs, I tend to not fuss with things very much. And I think that's how I developed this method. So if you're a more advanced user and you just want to get to the trick, I'll put a little timestamp and um, you can skip ahead to there. Okay, so this is going to be the pooling method, which is like the most awkward and the most joked about, but it's a great method of making handles. There are a variety of ways to make handles. This is how I do it. I like to start with a clay that's a little bit on the softer side. If I'm only gonna make one handle, I would use a small chunk. This is maybe a quarter of a pound. Okay, so I'm gonna treat this ball of clay the same way I would if I were going to be throwing with it. I'm gonna wedge it up using the cone method. This is not the best board, but uh, it has the best lighting right now. I'm creating this cone shape because I know this is essentially the shape that my handle is gonna be. I'm gonna tap it out and I'm actually, in this process, I'm pulling up and I'm throwing it back toward me like this. And this is actually stretching the clay. You can see it's getting longer pretty quick. And I'm turning it and trying to hit all these endpoints to keep it as round as possible in this state. And before I start pulling it, I'm gonna turn this into more of a coil. So I'm just gonna gently roll it just to soften those edges. And this is just gonna set me up for success. So now it is ready to go. So when you're pulling a handle, you're using your index finger and your thumb and essentially whatever shape you have here is what the clay is going to end up being. So if you keep your fingers really rounded, you're gonna have a round handle. If you keep your fingers in an almond shape, you're gonna have an almond shape with tapered handles. So I give myself enough room to hang on to it here and I make my hands wet. And I'm gonna start first by just making this clay wet. This is a messy process. The table all around may end up getting dirty, so just be aware of that. And essentially, you're just gonna keep everything really slick and you're gonna pull down and apply pressure evenly and continue to rotate this back and forth, back and forth. You'll know you need to stick your hand back in the water when things start to feel a little gummed up and not as smooth and slippery. But you wanna keep rotating this so that your sides get even. If I were to continue just on one side, this is gonna be a lopsided handle because it's actually very hard to keep your hand really, really symmetrical in this direction. So you wanna to continue to rotate to get the pressure even from side to side. And that's gonna give you a symmetrical handle. As you pull down and you get to the end here, you wanna relieve pressure a little bit and pull off. If you keep even pressure the whole way down, you're gonna end up tearing uh, the end off. So you kinda wanna leave up pressure a little bit at the end. If I were making a bunch of handles in a row, I would have a much bigger ball of clay, which I can show you that too. But anyway, right now this is still pretty thick. One test that I like to do is I actually flip this over until the clay flops down into a naturally nice shape. That's how I know it's thin enough. I just kind of let the clay tell me that it's ready. So right now it would still be really thick. And sometimes the end will get a little knob on here. You can just rip that off and keep going. So now I'm liking how thin it is at the bottom. So I'm gonna try to focus my attention here to the top a little bit more. 
try to thin the top out some. And I can tell that it's already, only after a couple pulls, it's gonna make a nice curve. See how this shape, that would fit your hand really well to hold on a mug. I might thin it out just a little bit more. Now what I like to do is have um, a container of water with a sharp edge. So you can really scrape a lot of that slip off of your hands. And I'm gonna flip this on its side, upside down, and I'm going to use the clay as a sticky point. And I'm gonna stick this onto the edge of the table and just allow it to dry naturally. And if I were going to pull a bunch of handles at a time, I would just start with a much bigger piece of clay. Pull your handles here. In between, let's say I rip this off and I'm ready for my next handle. I'm gonna just take this same piece and just roll this bottom edge just to get it set up. And I do this in between every handle that I make. So then I'll pull this handle and it's now extended and it's long. So I'm gonna tear this off, make my next handle. So it is gonna take a little while for your handle to be ready to attach to your mug. You wanna wait until it's not sticky anymore and it's not floppy, it's still firm, can hold its structure, but it's not too hard that you're gonna crack it. So typically you'll wanna make your handles before you trim your mug, if you're gonna be trimming your mug. So I pulled the handles and then trim this mug. I can do trimming videos at a later date. So the things that I like to use when I'm making handles, obviously the mug, I have my handle here and I'll do a close up to show you um, the state that this is in right now, but it's at a set basically leather hard if you're familiar with what that is. I like to use um, a folded up towel and I place my mug body on here to rest so that it doesn't dent on the sides. I have my, um, just a container with slip in it and a brush a knife. I am a big serrated rib fan. I think they're very underused. Um, I recently found this plastic one from the ceramic shop and I'm less afraid of it. It has happened a few times where I've gotten poked by my metal one. And um, I will be using a rubber tip later and my stamp, but I don't need those quite yet. So let me pull you around and I'll give you a close up. Okay, so my mug handle right now, the clay down here is still pretty soft. That's because this is thicker. I'm gonna tear that off and get that out of the way. So the clay up here, it's not tacky anymore, but it's still pliable. See, I can bend it. I don't wanna actually bend it too much, which is why I set it up on the edge of the table so that it can keep this nice arch. And I don't have to bend it much when I'm ready to attach it. So the end is gonna get harder just because there's, um, it's a smaller surface, so this is gonna dry out first. So you wanna watch this, maybe a little brittle down here. So one thing I remember when I was first learning to attach handles is I would always end up cutting this at the wrong place and the wrong angle. I would suggest starting with a cylinder if you're a novice. This way you know which orientation your handle is gonna be in when you attach it. It makes it pretty easy. So I'm gonna look at my handle and I'm actually gonna envision a straight line right here where my mug is, or where my mug will be. You can use um, a tool like this just to pretend this is the mug body. Um, I'm gonna want my handle to fit really nice in my hand. And the, I want the mug body to be about here. So I'm gonna make a pretend line. You can do this if you're a beginner. And just make a line kind of like this representing your mug. So I can see I need my cut to be here and here. So let's start with that. I'm gonna take my knife and just do a slice down. Same thing down here. Get rid of that. Now let's line it up onto our mug and see how it looks. So yeah, this is too long, but that's okay. It just was a starting point and I just needed to get this ready to go. So you can see this is kind of rocking. It's not a great connection. There's too much space. What you need to do is cut 
in a little swoop this way. So I'm going to cut a swoop this way to match the curve of the mug. So I can see this now is a much cleaner connection. So I'm going to do is I'm going to use my other hand and I'm going to hold the handle like this and grab this end and I'm going to bend it down to where this is still far enough away from the mug body to reach my hand in here. And what I'm actually going to do is just keep my hands here and just pinch this off. It's going to make it a lot easier rather than putting this down and trying to find where this cut needed to be. So I have this pinched out because I want the connection to be about here. This is obviously not a great look, <laughs> but now that it's off of the mug, I can easily take my knife and make this a nicer shape. So I'm just going to round this end and I know that this is going to need to come off down here as well to fit with this plane. Now I'm going to put it back on my mug. And we can see that we have a pretty decent shape. So what I'm going to do, flip it over and I can see this is not straight. It's not lined up right. So I'm just going to reposition this to where it's straight in the body of the mug. I'm going to leave it here, hold it with my left hand, grab my knife. I'm just going to gently mark around those connection points. Flip it over, take your serrated rib or whatever you're going to be using, put some really good scratches in here. I'm going to scratch the body. Now I'm going to grab my slip. I like to use a little bit more water on the body just to start to get this wet because your mug it has probably been thrown a day ago. So it tends to be a little bit more dry than what your handle is. Now I'm going to try to get more of the actual, the thicker slip. Put this on. I'm going to really layer it in. And now is where we're getting into what may be a little bit different than what you've learned in the past. I'm going to make sure I have enough slip on here that it's going to ooze out. I'm going to go back in and put a little bit more on the mug body. We know where our pieces are going because it's mapped out. We're going to stick this on here gently at first just to get everything lined up. You can see that it's really oozing out and that's great. This actually may be a little bit too much. I'm going to do one quick wipe just so it doesn't drip down the side of the mug because I don't want to make a mess. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put my finger on the inside of the mug and grab the handle and really squish it on here. You don't want to dent the body, but you want to wiggle it around to make sure it kind of, you'll feel it kind of stick to where you can't slide it around anymore. Same thing with the bottom. Um, it's harder to wiggle the bottom, so I'm just moving my finger back and forth. Now, this is where things are a little bit different than normal. Your instant reaction is going to be Take your finger and swipe this away, clean it up, start going in there with a metal tool or a wooden tool and just <laughs> rub this all over the place. Don't do that. Let this alone. What's going to happen is all of this liquid clay, this slip, it's actually going to start to shrink. And as it shrinks, it's going to pull into the areas where the cracks normally happen. So it's really tempting, but I'm telling you, it's going to be easier to clean this up after it dries a little bit. I'm just checking in. It's actually been about six minutes. I can see this still has some shine to it, which means it's still too wet. I don't want it to be shiny anymore. While we're waiting on this to firm up a little bit, I thought I'd just take a quick minute to thank you for being here and getting this far in the video. This YouTube channel is brand spanking new for me. I'm still trying to get the hang of it. So. Thanks for bearing with me. I would absolutely love if you'd subscribe, if you'd hit a like, leave a comment, just help push my uh, page out there a little bit since it's so new. I'd really appreciate that. 
Um, also, if you want to follow me along on Instagram, TikTok, I also have a website. If you want to check that out, uh, it's crystalosmonddesigns.com. Instagram is Crystal O Designs. Okay, I did change locations because I wanted to be directly under the light and I'm standing, so we'll see how good I do. But you can see how much this has shrank. Get a little closer here. All this liquid slip just shrank down and it actually pulled into the creases and kind of filled in. So now what we're going to do is take this shaping tool. This is a rubber shaper. I believe it's actually made for painting. It has one end that's almost like a trimming tool. Is this going to focus? <laughs> one end is actually like a trimming tool and this is kind of a stiff rubber. I'm going to start pushing this extra clay into this seam. It's kind of a push and a scrape, but you don't want to wipe it off. The action you're trying to do is pushing this excess in. So just push it in and don't be too fussy. What I have found is when you glaze this, a lot of glaze is going to pull around here anyway. So I have stopped being overly meticulous. Just kind of a swipe on the bottom. And honestly, that's all I'm going to do on the top part. After it comes out of bisque, maybe I'll take some sandpaper and smooth it a little bit. I can do the same thing down here. And honestly, that is it. Like I said, you can see there's some little tiny uh, flakes right here. You could scrape that off or you could just sand it <laughs> when it's this square. The more you fuss with it, the worse it's going to get. So I would just leave it as is. I, glaze is going to fill this all in and it's going to cover it up. Unless you're using a very clear, transparent glaze, this is going to self-heal. Let me show you. So here's a finished mug. This is the same clay body I was just working with. And this glaze is a little bit transparent. but you're always going to have some pooling in this crease. So it's very forgiving with all those little extra nuggets that might be sticking out. Anyway, don't be too fussy unless you have an exposed area like this. I like to leave a lot of exposed clay down here. I want to keep that really, really clean because you're not going to be able to hide it with glaze. And I'm not saying use glaze to like be sloppy, but just know you don't have to fuss for an hour on a mug handle because it's gonna get glazed over. Okay, and then my last step is I put my hand inside of my mug and I take my maker's mark and I stamp this onto the bottom. It's hard to do standing up. And this is uh, my company name. I then take an underglaze and I'll sign my name across right here. So another reason why cracking can happen is not letting things dry properly. Before I wrap this up, I'm going to give it one final mist all around the top. I kind of focus on this rim because this is going to get the driest, the fastest. Um, after spraying it, wrap it up pretty tight in some plastic and basically just let it dry as slow as possible. Sometimes I'll let my mugs dry for an entire week before I take the plastic off completely. I'm a firm believer in even slow drying. I think that's why a lot of people get warping and cracking. It's sometimes just in the drying process. Basically, you want to make sure your cup part and your handle part end up being the exact same consistency. So giving it one final mist and wrapping it up really tight is going to make sure these absorb the same amount of moisture and they're drying at the same time. I do just want to show you one thing here. When I make a bunch of mugs, I'm going to put them all together with their handles close to the uh, body of the mug beside it. This is gonna help it to dry even slower. They kind of even each other out. And honestly, it helps to keep everything protected. So I have a whole board here and I kind of pair them up like that. So after this has dried out completely and you're confident that it is bone dry, you can then put it in the kiln, do a slower bisque firing. You want um, any excess moisture that may be trapped inside. Should help a lot. 
So thanks for joining me today in my basement studio. I'm very excited to start making more YouTube videos and seeing where this goes. I'd love to hear if this worked for you. Please comment below and let me know. Follow up later. Uh, maybe this is something you already do. If so, spread the word. <laughs> I want everyone to make wonderful mugs that they enjoy using. I know mugs can bring so much joy, not only to ourselves, but when you gift them, people really treasure a gifted mug. So anyway, that is all for now. Happy making. Put your work into the world.